Hello, and welcome back to Dark Souls. Um, this is where we left off. But you might notice a couple of differences. I have some new gear. So, like I said last time, um, I was going to go ahead and farm these guys for their sword. Um, let's see, when I say these guys, specifically I mean these guys. This guy is kind of hanging out, so I'm going to get a decent look at him. These guys are the Balder Knights. And they're kind of interesting. Because clearly, they clearly have plate armor going on. And if I can go ahead and drag him on down here real quick. I'm also wearing their armor. Bits of it, anyways. So... I can see their fighting style is kind of like a, uh, a French fencing style, almost. With the, uh, the buckler and a uh, thrusting sword. And it's all about stabbing attacks. But, as their armor kind of suggests a, uh, a sort of Roman gladiatorial style. And like that right there, that is a, uh, a French fencing stance right there. But like I said, their, their armor... What with the red cape and uh, the helmet, especially. Unfortunately, I don't really have the helmet to uh, give you an idea. Um. Hmm, I see. Ooh, okay. Alright. That's just one of those things. Alright, that's enough out of you, buddy. As I was saying, their armor, the way it's designed, where... They don't have full greaves, they just have shin guards mostly. Between the cape, the uh, the way armor on the actual arms are handled, uh, I'm wearing it right now, the, uh, the, the way the tassets are designed, and that's these bits of armor plate on my hips, and as well as the skirt. And mostly in the helmet. Unfortunately, I don't have the helmet, so I can't just put it on to show you. But if I can just get... So he has the visor up. But as you can see, it kind of has that Roman gladiatorial helmet thing going on. But the thing is, like, it's obviously still a knight's helm with a, a visor that can be closed. Hey, T. It's, it's a sort of mixture between... Like I said, a, a sort of gladiatorial Roman soldier and a, uh, a French knight. And that's what I've always found so interesting about the Balder Knights. Is they are this mixture of two different uh, inspirations from uh, real-life world history of this type. Here's a good look at his head. I'm going to see kind of the helmet. Like I said, it kind of has a mixture of a knight's helm with a visor that can be opened and closed, but the visor itself is styled after Roman gladiatorial helmets. Roman gladiatorial helmets? And or Greek gladiatorial helmets. It's, it's a bit difficult to tell sometimes. Come on. So, just for good old-fashioned shits and or giggles. Ooh, hello. Oh. <laughs> I could put this on, too. You know what? Yeah, this is a little less bulky, but it's kind of silly looking. <laughs> oh, help me. I like it, though. It's, it's dumb. By the way, I took off Havel's ring, so in case you're wondering, on average, like, this is about as good as you're gonna look in terms of possible armor defense by the time you get to the undead parish. All right, that's enough out of you. Fun fact though, um, I went to farm these guys specifically for their for the Balder side sword. Um, the rarest drop they give, if I recall correctly, it has something like a 10% or a 5% uh, drop rate. The very first one I killed gave me one. So that's, that's interesting. Not only that, but I managed to get two frickin' more for free. I'm not even gonna use them. 
Oh, but this gives me an idea, though. I can, I can go ahead and do this real quick. I can show you that... Ah, oh, criminy. This armor is a little too heavy. Okay, I'm good now. I can show you that dual wielding is not really a thing in Dark Souls 1. And I can go ahead and just show this off real quick. Of course, I say it's not really a thing. There is a... I want to say one, maybe two particular exceptions to that rule. But, okay. So, in my right hand, I have my sword, and in my left hand, I have the same sword, yeah? Okay. So, if I hit R1, you know, I have my normal attack, and if I hit R2, I have my stronger attack. In this case, it ver it, it mixes between a slash and a thrust. Okay. And obviously, there are different variations, like if I do a back step, I'll get this running cut, or if I do a roll, I'll get this kind of upper thrust, upper cut deal. So if I hit L1 with this sword in my left hand, what'll I do? Oh. Oh, I see. The character just blocks with the sword. Okay, what about L2? Ah, it's, it's an attack, kind of like if I do R1 and L1. So, okay. Let's just go test this out real quick, just for good old-fashioned shits and giggles. Also, you can see, I got... I'm sitting on a pretty hefty thing of souls right now. Don't worry about that. It'll be just fine. It'll be just fine. So, as you can see there, it's not really faster than just spamming R1. In fact, it's about the same speed. One, two, one, two. So if I do, if I alternate them, it'll go one, two, one, two. In fact, there is a little bit of a delay, so okay. Is there anything that you can that you can really kind of do this with? Okay, well I can't use this because I'm not strong enough. What about this one? Oh, I'm definitely not strong enough. Okay, what about the S talk? The S talk is a thrusting sword, so. Oh shoot, I forgot they did that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I was wrong. So, dueling kind of is a little tiny bit of a thing in Dark Souls 1. Okay. And I'll show you what I mean. Fuck. Well, if I can... Hmm. And that is, there are certain weapons that you can put in your offhand. As you can see here, L1, I get the thrust. Yeah. And it works just like normal. And if I do L2... It's a parry, Un but the trade-off is the parry in with a weapon. With this weapon in particular is has a very short window, and I am not practiced at it at all. Excuse me a moment, there, buddy. So you can kind of do it, but it's difficult. And if you're gonna do it, obviously, as as you can see here. You don't want to just do two of the same weapon. The only thing that truly works is going to be, you know, as you can see here, weapons of varying types. And weapons that are more dexterity based, like uh, thrusting swords and. Let me see here, do I have a scimitar? Uh, I don't know if I do. I don't think I do. Well, let's see if the dagger's like that. Yep, the dagger is a parry and a dagger. Daggers, curved swords, weapons of that nature, those are the ones that you're going to want to use. But as obviously, like, a dagger here is not really going to be much use to me because... Well, I say that, but this dagger in particular has a lot of bleed damage on it. So like I said, you can, you can manage something, but it's not optimal. It's not nearly as useful as it would be in Dark Souls 2, where the moveset of the weapon simply m gets a mirrored animation, where it goes to the opposite hand.
but you can do it. It's possible, it's just difficult. And the thing about that is, that's realistic. Let me see here. What's the short sword like? Okay, the short sword is not really a weapon for it. Um, let's see, I don't really have any other dexterity-based weapons. Of course... Okay, I can't really do anything with the spear since I'm not strong enough to use it. Not strong enough for the mace either. Well, let's just see if I can't get that parry down real quick. Let's see here. But the thing about that, like I was trying to say, though, is that's realistic. Is It's realistic that using two weapons is difficult and not exactly optimal. It's, it's possible. But especially when it comes to, like, two swords. Oh, dear. Oh, uh, yeah. But, yeah, especially when it comes to using two swords in particular, it's just not a very optimal situation. And only, like, the people who were the best at what they were doing could really get their money's worth out of doing that, so to speak. Let's see here. But, yeah. So, the reason I'm using this sword in particular, and it's going to be the main weapon of this particular playthrough, I really need to go get those souls, by the way. <laughs> That's... I really can't afford to lose those souls. But, anyways, the main reason I'm using this weapon is because this is the weapon that you want to use if you want to do good old-fashioned sword and board combat, which is what I like best about Dark Souls, I'm not going to lie. But you want to do a, uh, a very efficient build, we'll say. It's a, it's a way to... Uh, well, let's call it what it is. It's it's a way to min-max. So one of the reasons why I decided to do a dexterity int build is because one of the game's hidden mechanics that it doesn't tell you about, and this is one of the shittier things about Dark Souls 1, is that um, dexterity, in addition to making dex-based weapons... Ooh, I wonder if I can use that spear. No, I'm just one strength shy. Oh, well. So, anyways. Dexterity, in addition to making dex-based weapons do more damage, um, it also makes casting speed go up. Oh, all right. More Titanite. Let's go and uh, exact some revenge, shall we? Ha! Oh, you absolute bastard. Come here, you. Got him. Well, while I'm doing this, I may as well show you the uh, the good old-fashioned farming slash grinding route that I was taking. Because I'm already halfway through it, and it'll only take a second. So this is uh, one of the many things you pick up on if you play this game over and over again. Just some good old-fashioned routes to farm and grind for things. Come out here. And this guy will come out to you first, all on his own. Just like that. Get out the bow. Shoot this guy in the face. Yep. Hmm. Dead. And there's a guy on the left here. There we go. And that's your good old-fashioned farming slash grinding route right there. Alright, now let's go ahead and start making a little bit of progress. There's one more thing I want to do before I take on the boss properly. Ah, cripes. With this guy, you can kind of cheese him using the staircase like this. Now that guy over there, oh, he buffs some undead fellows that are hanging out around him. Let's see if I can hit him through the window here. Mm, I 
I might be able to if I angle it just right. Uh, but it's not really going to do very much. What about with a bow and arrow? <laughs> We're doing it, boys. The true Dark Souls experience. Well, while we've got him nice and distracted, and he can't seem to hit us, we can get a good look at him. So this guy is called the Six-Eye Channeler. For the time being, he's a mini-boss. Oh my god. Oh my god. There we go. That wasn't so bad. But you want to get rid of him as quick as possible because he casts a buff spell. And it just wore off. But as you can see on that undead fellow over there. Um, oh my goodness, there is a lot of them. Aye, aye, aye. Cripes. <laughs> there we go. As you could kind of see right before it wore off, though, the uh, these undead guys had a little aura glowing around them. And here's a nice little detail. Down there is that wooden bridge that I was on when I was fighting the Balder Knight, and over there is the route to the bonfire. So if I was paying attention, which I kind of wasn't, I could see this item up here from down there. And I could already know about it. And I'm like, oh, hey, I already know about this weapon, and here it is. It's just one of those things about Dark Souls. It's, again, it's, it's setup and reward, I should say. Prisoner ahead. Oh, wow. That's a very good message. So I know exactly what that's referring to. Ah! Gotcha. I may as well take a swig. Because I know what I'm going to do. Uh, like I said, I'm not running for the boss just yet. I have a couple things i got to do. Now, this is kind of interesting. Up here in this attic, they have all these chairs, yeah? And this is, this is a church. This is a church, make no mistake. There's all these chairs, there's this barrel. Humanity. There's like an actual, like, proper storage area up here. And boom! I already knew about this. Not only is there a storage area, there's a cell for this guy. So let's get a, good, a nice good look at him. His armor is kind of golden in color. And his helmet is very blatantly done up in such a way to look almost kind of like a crown. This is one of the more... Mm, how to put it? goofy fantasy designs of Dark Souls 1 right here. Because this armor, oh god, no. This, arm, this armor that he's wearing is not practical at all. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I was using a small shield, and the small shields are kind of interesting. Let me just show this off real quick. So this is a medium shield, yeah? That's the parry window on it. This is a buckler. It's a sm counts as a small shield. The parry window is is a... Uh, it's a bigger window of animation. But okay, let's talk to this guy. Oh, still human, are you? Then I am in luck. Could you help me? As you can see, I am stuck without recourse. Thank you. Yes, sincerely. I am Knight Lautrec of Karim. I truly appreciate this. And I guarantee a reward. Only later. Yes, very sorry. Your reward will have to wait. I have just been freed. Allow me some time. I am free. Now I can get back to work. <laughs> Anything else? I am free. Now I can get back to work. <laughs> so clearly he's a trustworthy guy, yeah? <clears throat> 
So, some random guy with the most garish armor I've come across so far has been put into a cell and hidden away in the attic of this here church. God, look at all these just basic undead guys. And, uh, the interesting thing is that obviously he has, a, you know, a fairly evil-sounding lab. You know, let's call a spade a spade, yeah? But the thing about it, the thing that's interesting about it, and the way that was handled, is that, um, everybody punctuates their sentences with laughs around here. All of them do. All of them have. That uh, crestfallen dude over at Firelink here, Andre did at one point, Siegmeier randomly laughing at various bullshit. So, even though he, again, clearly a, a very evil laugh, which is supposed to raise your eyebrows in, uh, and it, it's supposed to raise your eyebrows in suspicion. The thing is, he's really not that out of place. Okay, now let's see here if I can just... See if I can... There we go. So I kind of wanted to show off his weapons real quick, so I went and gave him a kick. Kind of loses a little bit of the ceremony in his sitting down, but whatever. Check him out. I was just talking about how this game is built so that only certain types of weapons can be uh, dual-wieldable, so to speak. And here he is with a couple curved swords. Yeah? Okay, interesting. And that is something else, too, is... Um, I know a lot of people get kind of up in arms about realism in games like this. And they, they'll look at this and be like, ah, ah, it's not realistic, he's using two swords. But the thing is, there is actual evidence to suggest that there were sword masters that could fight using two swords. Like I was saying earlier, it's incredibly hard to do. And mainly the the sword in the offhand was used for uh, blocking and parrying. And much less about your typical video game thing where you're just like flailing around with both arms just going wild. But. Another interesting thing to note about his swords here, these are called chattels. And as you can kind of tell, they're hooked in such a way that if I'm blocking, he could still, like, get around the shield and cut at my arm. And that is a real type of sword. Obviously, this design is a little bit exaggerated for video game purposes to just kind of get the point across even more, but there are swords out there that look kind of like this. It's a real concept. And another thing to note about his armor, and this is kind of kind of important, is that it is designed with an aesthetic to make it look like there are arms coming over his shoulder and, like, hugging him around the torso. Okay? So that's just a, an, an important detail about his armor. Ah, hello there. I have your reward. Please, accept it. I am grateful to you for freeing me. <laughs> oh, I bet you Not are. enough for you. Well, let's not be greedy now. <laughs> I like this guy. Let's hear what else he has to say. By the Lord. Your face. <laughs> your humanity is really slipping. But there are methods. Most fools have more humanity than they know what to do with. Now, who do you imagine will make the best use of it? Mm -hmm. So as you can clearly see, this guy is, uh, let's say, uh, m let's call him morally gray. Whereas upstairs, crestfallen guy was like, you know, you could go attacking other people and take their humanity, but I mean, I wouldn't do that. That's kind of a shitty thing to do. 
And this guy is like, man, fuck him. I need it more, though. And if you're like me, you need it more. So, I mean, why not just take it, yeah? That's just his character. <laughs> you again. What is it? Our futures are murky. Let's not be too friendly now. Oh, wow. Come on. <laughs> you again. Our futures are... Okay. So that's all the dialogue he has for now. And... Let's see. I can't really think of a way to get him to show it unless I fight him. But... He does have a secondary weapon for his offhand. And it is a parrying dagger. And again, this is something that historically actually exists. A dagger specifically for parrying that has a wide fork uh, guard for catching opponents' blades and what have you. Oh, have you seen that terribly morose lass? The fire keeper. She's stuck keeping that bonfire lit. Sad, really. She's mute and bound to this forsaken place. They probably cut her tongue out back in her village so that she'd never say any god's name in vain. How do these martyrs keep chugging along? I'd peter out in an instant. <laughs> mm. So this guy now has some new dialogue. Now that things have changed a little bit here at the Firelink Shrine. And that's something to keep in mind as you progress through the game, is that every once in a while, something will change here at your hub area. And it's a good idea to kind of like check back in with your guys to see if they have any more dialogue. Mm hmm? What now? I'm not up for chat. Okay, so that's all he's got for now. Alright, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see if Petra says anything else. Oh, miracles? No, not miracles. I'm afraid that... No, he's all done. All right, bye, Petrus. Okay, now it is time for us to go and take on the first um, major boss of Dark Souls 1. But for that, I'm going to... Not because I need to, but I am going to bring in a couple of people. NPC in particular. But before I do that, I'm sitting on a lot of souls that I don't really need right now. So, I'm gonna go spend them. Something in particular. And again, I'm not gonna grab that item just yet. This is gonna trigger something that I don't want to happen just yet. Yeah? 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 Huh! <laughs> I think for just right now though I am going to go ahead and stick with this uh, this look of stuff that you get along the way to the first major boss because why not mm, mm -mm. Uh, it's already been 30 minutes god alright so now I have enough money to buy something in particular. Hey, Andre. Well, hello again. You seem to be doing all right. Need any? Need anything for? No, I need you to give me this crest, my friend. So now I have the crest of Artorias. Don't get yourself killed. Neither, Neither of us want, want to, to see you go hollow. Yes, I know, Andre. Fun fact. Andre of Astora originally had a much bigger role to play in uh, the original, like, script. He was gonna be a much more vital character, and he was gonna hang out uh, over at Firelink Shrine instead of over here. And there was gonna be, like, a path that was blocked off, and after a certain point, Andre would, um, go ahead and move part of the thing for you so that you could go past like a boulder that was in your way or something. The idea being like, oh, he's such a big, strong guy. So now I am in human mode. 
And you have to be in human mode to summon characters. And might I say that this armor is a lot sexier when you're not looking like beef jerky. Of course, the, th the thing to, to note is that this armor looks this way on both men and women characters. It's not just, like, a sexist thing. And the thing to note is that, unlike other armors, it doesn't have cloth covering certain parts. Kind of similar to this armor. Because, as you can see, there's just, like, rags where the cloth should be. Because the thing is, um, this equipment is just really old. So old that much of the cloth and leather has straight up rotted away. And that's kind of the implication with a lot of the undead soldiers and what have you. In the undead burg slash parish. Oh shoot, I just realized. Hang on, before I get into the area proper, I was gonna go ahead and... Let's see here. Let's see here. The Knights of the... I'm gonna go ahead and read some item descriptions real quick. The Knights of the Ancient Kingdom of Baldur wielded these rock-solid long swords, which are excellent for thrust attacks. Baldur was the home of Knight King Rendell. But the kingdom was reduced to ruins after the widespread outbreak of undead. Let's see here. Armor worn by the Knights of the Ancient Kingdom of Baldur. It is made from thick iron plates. Uh, let's see here. Baldur was the homeland... The Night King Rindal became blah blah blah. Okay, so same thing. What about these? Uh, yeah. Same thing. Same thing, same thing. Okay, that's fine. Oh, wait, I also have... Um, I also have their, their shield. Oh, I'm not strong enough to use the shield. Uh, <laughs> this is something that I like about Dark Souls 1, and it kind of it kind of is disappointing that they got rid of it. But as you can see, I, I'm not strong enough to use the shield, so... <laughs> I love that detail. Like if I if I uh let's see here, what do I not have? what else do I not have enough strength for? So like I don't have enough strength for the mace, yeah? <laughs> it looks so pathetic. <laughs> It's so funny. I love that. It's such a good detail. All right, that's enough for messing around. Uh, let's see here. Anything else? Um, no, more or less the same thing. Eh? Okay. Let's go back. Okay. All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna have to kind of speed this along because being in human mode also means that you can be invaded by other players. Ignore that guy. Are you gonna ignore me? No, okay, you won't ignore me. Alright, well, that worked out. That worked out just fine. I love cheesing this guy on the stairs. It's so easy. <laughs> All right. Come along, undead. Fuck. Sheesh. Ugh, okay. Now let's see here. This may or may not have worked out. I might have to do a little something extra to get this to work. Aha! It worked. Okay. So now that Lautrec is our bud, he's going to come help us. Right now, I'm not doing this for any other reason than pure shits and giggles and to show off that you can do this. But also, in addition to him, we got our buddy, uh, Solaire. With his brilliant golden emblem. If you miss it, you must surely be blind. Ha 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 ha. So, 
There we go. And there's Solaire, his glorious golden phantom. The reason he is a golden phantom and La Trek is a white phantom is because Solaire is a member of the Sunlight Warrior Covenant, and when you're a member of the Sunlight Warrior Covenant, you get to have a golden phantom. Okay, so let's go! I can give them a second to come on in. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Kill him before he even... Wow, this is so easy. Oh, we didn't... I didn't get it. If you cut off his tail... Yeah, I probably should have done this on my own. But yeah, so... The second one comes in once you get that one down to full health. Up, down to half health. And it's actually a lot more balanced than you might think. Because this one's preferred strategy is to stay away from you and just breathe fire. God, that was so easy since I had these two phantom helpers. Wow. Oh well. That was over really quick. I'll be honest. <laughs> I kind of wish I had done that on my own. But, eh, I'm here to show... Awesome content. Here's an empty room. Ah, here we go. But uh, if you cut off that gargoyle's tail, its tail is has an axe head on it. And if you cut off its tail, you get its tail as a weapon. And again, it's it's one of the more silly like fantasy video game things about Dark Souls One is it, you cut off its tail and you literally get, like, this bendy axe. It's very bizarre. It's a nice panning shot give you an idea of scale. And what's interesting about this is that, well, more or less from here, you are overlooking the area that you just got through. You have ascended, you have quite literally ascended far above all of that. And it's as literal as it is metaphorical. And it's kind of one of the more interesting things about Dark Souls 1 from a thematic standpoint. And, oh, hey! Check it out! There's a guy here. Greetings. I am Oswald of Kareem, the Pop. Thou art a friend. For thee, a warm welcome. Cometh thou to confess? Or to accuse? For indeed, all sin is my demand. So this guy is a priest of the goddess of sin called Velka. Let's see, request absolution, abandon the covenant. Well, I don't have any covenants to abandon. Let's see here, so you, buy, you can sell, you can get a couple things here. So here's something interesting for you. W one of the more interesting things about Dark Souls 1, to me anyways, um, Velka's talisman. Well, let's see here. Medium for casting miracles of God's black tuft of hair that serves as a talisman. Belongs to Velka, goddess of sin. Okay, there we go, there's that. 
It casts miracles, not drawing upon faith, but intelligence. So even though miracles are all about faith, and you have to have high faith to cast the good miracles, check this one out. This has an int requirement of 16, and uh, kind of hard to tell from here, but on in the left block, there's a candle icon. That means intelligence, and it has an A scaling in intelligence. It casts miracles, not based off of faith, but based on how smart your character is. Which is something... Well, is there anything else I really need to know here? Which is something... Um, what was I saying? What's interesting about that is that it is basically an item in the game that in actively encourages you to do a mixed build. Or at least to throw a little bit of variety into your character's build. I'm tempted to go ahead and grab this for, again, good old-fashioned shits and giggles, but eh, I'll leave it for now. If I want it later on, I'll come back for it. But that's just, that's interesting to think about, yeah? And it's not the only thing in the item, in the game, either. There, eventually, you can get a catalyst, which casts sorceries, and it scales off of your faith. So, I don't know. I, that's just something I kind of like about Dark Souls 1, is that even though it's more efficient overall, and kind of... It's one of those games where doing an efficient build that focuses on one or two particular things is going to get you more bang for your buck. Spreading yourself out really thin takes a lot longer and is objectively less useful. Because if you're spreading yourself very thin, you know, you're, you're not putting as many points as you could just into those one or two stats and getting, like, say, you know, as much damage out of your sword as possible. But okay, anyways. Purging Stone. Ash Colored Stone encas encasing a skull. Secret Treasure of Arshtor, Earl of Karim. Reduce curse buildup and break curse. Uh, humans are helpless against curse and can only redirect their influence. The Purging Stone does not dispel curses but receives them as a surrogate. The stone itself was once a person or some other human being. Interesting, very interesting. Uh, indictment. Now, this is, gets into the multiplayer aspects of the game, and so does the Book of the Guilty. So, indictment. The way it works is you gather up some indictments, slip sold by Bishop of Velka, Goddess of Sin. If you are killed by an invader, use this to report the crime of that trespasser. So basically, other players can invade your world as a red phantom so long as you are in human form. And if you're carrying around indictments, you can slap an indictment on them for killing you. And the more, indictment a pers more indictments a player gets, the higher up they show up in the Book of the Guilty. And the more priority blue phantoms of justice have to go hunt them down, otherwise known as Blades of the Dark Moon. So, kind of an interesting mechanic, but it got to be... What's the word? It, it actually came to cause more problems than it solved. Because what would end up happening is a lot of cheaters would get all of the indictments, because, the, you know, they would just... Because they're cheating, they would just kill people really easily and people wouldn't get frustrated and indict them but then blue phantoms would basically be wasting their time because they'd be chasing after someone who's cheating and they can't really win against and then so anyways book of the guilty online play item check blah 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 goddess of sin velka oversees the list of the guilty who have disrespected the gods or their covenants and shall one day face the wrath of the blades of the dark moon so already I'm kind of getting a little bit of information. Let's see here. For each sin, there is a punishment. This is a spell for uh, faith users called Karmic Justice. Uh, da -da -da. For each sin, there is a punishment. And it is the task of Goddess Velka to define the sin and mete out the punishment. Okay, anything else that I really need to... So they, there are these uh, bite rings that come from Karim. Dreadful rumors surrounding its creation. Maiden Karim, Mystical Ring. Oh, hello. I never, re I never realized this. The Ring of Sacrifice. This mystical ring was created in 
sacrificial rite of Velka, the goddess of sin. So blah blah blah. I never really realized that the rings of sacrifice were uh, a Velka thing, Velka related, I should say. So. You're not welcome any time. It is only human to commit a sin. <laughs> More bizarre laughter. All right, so. There's, there's a bunch of unpackage here. First of all, he is clearly a cleric of Velka. But let's see if I can... There we go. Now, okay, I did that to show off his equipment. First of all, he has a thrusting sword. That rapier is called Velka's rapier. It's a pretty good rapier. But this is the dagger I was talking about. This is the da same dagger that Lautrec has. And it's called a parrying dagger. Now, what's interesting about that is that Oswald here, this pretty white hair, comes from Karim. Lautrec is also from Karim. And if I'm not mistaken, the description on the parrying dagger says something about uh, a fighting style in Karim. So it's kind of implied that knights of Karim, or at least war sword fighters of Karim, have a fighting style that involves using a sword in one hand of some kind and a parrying dagger in the other. And hang on real quick, let me just let me just point this out real quick. So this boss fight involves a couple of big monsters and this big open space. You notice how far how much further the camera has panned out for me just to give me a good view of what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, I wish the rest I there are certain points in this game series as a whole where I wish it did that more so. There are certain boss fights in Dark Souls 2 and 3 that are more needlessly difficult than they need to be because the camera just doesn't pull out far enough. Hmm. Well, here's a funny little glitch. This buddy is trapped in the wall, and I made him look like he's standing up. Get out of there, you fool. Alright, so let's see here. Now, let's see here. What am I doing next? Ah, I can go talk to Lotrek. So, fun fact. On elevators such as this... When you do the parry, your uh, shield kind of grinds up against the wall like that. And that is uh, some tech that people use to figure out the uh, parry frames on various shields. Let's see here. Um, oh. oh shit, I forgot what the jump button was. Oh well, that's fine. Here I was trying to hit L3, but it's actually uh, B. Okay, and then about this point, I think it's safe to say that I should probably go ahead and man, these skeletons are rough. But it's it's mainly because of the. Uh, type that I'm using. They're skeletons. So slashing isn't really going to do me much good. You just kind of have to brute force it. There we go. Let's see here. So I think it's... I think I will go ahead and put on... Uh, some of the elite knight armor. Yeah. yeah, okay. Here we go. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put on the other shield too.
Is it done? Is it done? Okay. So I mentioned this before, but here's a statue of a lady holding a child, yeah? So, there's one over there, in the undead burg, uh, across the bridge from where the wyvern is, and there's one more in the undead parish. Let's see here, Petrus, do you have anything else to say now? Oh, miracle. I'm afraid that may- Okay. But let's see here, is there any miracle- what's- what's the, uh, faith requirement on all of these? Great heal excerpt, uh, 12, 12, 12, 18, mm. oh, basic healing, 12, okay. So the lowest I can really go if I want any miracles is 12. Come again. The effectiveness of the teachings depend upon your faith. Oh, yeah, I bet. All right. So real quick, let's go and talk to our buddies. Surely we have new things for them to say, yeah? Why, what a surprise. I didn't expect you to make it. Yeah. Oh, somebody rang the bell. Wait, was it you? You never give up, do you? I don't know how you do it. Well, don't stop now. Only one more. But it's going to be suicide. <laughs> Anything else to say there? What's wrong? Get a bit of a scare out there? No problem. Have a seat and get comfortable. We'll both be hollow before you know it. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I've already decided. I don't really care. I'm simply crestfallen. And that's where he gets his, uh... Let's say his colloquial nickname as the Crestfallen Warrior. Mm hmm? What now? I'm not up for chatting. Okay. Leave me alone. So he's all done dialogue. Okay, now I think I'm gonna go ahead and bump up this Balderside sword a little bit. Ah, I've got the Titan. I may as well go ahead and bump it up to plus five. So now, but to give you an idea of how how uh, poor scaling wise the S talk is compared to just the Balder side sword, because the Balder here's the thing, unupgraded the Balder side sword scaling for dexterity is B, whereas like you know the dagger here is also B, but I mean well it's a dagger. C C B B B. Where's the s talk? The s talk, even though it is a dex weapon, is C. So if I go from that to one that's unupgraded, it goes from 95 to 107. And now this one's doing 163 because it's upgraded. Ah, uh, uh, hello. Law trick? Hmm. He'll be back. All right. So let's see here. Oh yes, I remember what I was doing now. There's just there's a uh, something I need to take care of real quick. And one thing that's kind of interesting to think about too is uh, this game's use of music. Because you notice that there's not really a lot of music, even when you're just traveling around from place to place. Ah, uh, this one is tricky. Oh. There we go. Let's see here. Oh, okay. The Undead Asylum F2 West Key. Floor 2 West Key, I should say. Let's see, let's see. Undead Asylum East Key, Floor 2. Key to the Iron Bores in the East. East side, the second floor, North Dead and Asylum, blah blah blah. Even if an undead were to escape from his cell, past the outside world would not be gained easily. Okay, well, I already read that. Let's see here. Um, segmented by countless iron bars. 
But even if a hero found a key in Lordran to liberate this prison, would he have the means or the heart to ever come back? Mm. Very interesting. Oh, trust me, I, I have the... Oh, dear. Mm. Well, that's annoying. Let's see here, can I... Mm. Ah, I'm gonna have to go back up there. I'll save that for later. I'll come back to that. Right now, there's a couple other things I want to take care of. Let me see. No, that's not what I want. Um, what have I got in terms of... Okay, I got a little large triton. I got some turnips. Okay. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going back up this way for now. I'm going to take care of the lower undead bird next. Come here, you. Now these guys are completely trivial to me because I have a sword that is for this particular stretch. Oh, hello. Fully upgraded as far as this stretch of game is concerned. How dare you? Get over here, you. I always hate going through this tunnel because the loud splashing is always so annoying. But whatever. One thing I will say though is uh, this game has pretty solid sound design. Aside from that. take too long. Not nearly as long since I, like I said, I have a much stronger sword. And my armor is much better now, too. It, too, is making this uh, particular trek fairly trivial. Now, real quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and plunk down on this bonfire real quick, just to set it as my checkpoint. Set the enemies. And let's see here. Oh, I remember what I was doing. But first. Let's see here. this nonsense. Come on. Alright. Ow. Still Since I have a bunch ahead. of Never. extra money, <laughs> I want to go ahead and get a few things. I don't really need this, but I'm going to have it anyways. Um, let's see here. I'm, I want this and this. Can't use that, can't use that. Don't really need any of this. Well, why not go ahead and get the full set of chain mail? Why not? And I'll go ahead and buy... a hundred standard arrows. Thank you, Ka now, let's see here. So, if I have 
now I have two different kinds of arrows equipped, which is the maximum amount you can you have to pick which arrows are going to go where. But if I do that, now you can see I have the wooden arrows equipped right now. All I have to do is hit either RT or LT slash R2 L2 and bada bing, switch to a different set of arrows. Bada bing, switch to the other kind. I'm going to do this. This is known as the uh, longbow shuffle. It's pretty silly. Oh wait, I just realized. Hang on, do I have too many hand bolts? Oh, hang on, I gotta... <laughs> I do have a couple crossbows. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You gotta see this nonsense. This is quite silly. Yes, yes. Ha 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 I love this. I love everything about this. Oh, Dark Souls 1, don't ever change. And it won't. Alright. Now, let's see here. What was I doing? Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and spend these souls so I don't lose them. Because that is a distinct possibility. So, no, not that. Let's see here. Um, hmm. Is there anything I need right now? The answer is no, not really. Could go ahead and do that. So let's see, I've got three levels to spend. Hmm. Kind of. Ugh, I hate leaving one of these on such an awkward line. Wait, hang on, do I have any soul items? I think I do. Aha! Maybe this will give me enough for four. Maybe. Yes! Okay, perfect. Ugh, oh, good. It's not awkward. Alright. <laughs> Alright, bye, fucker. Alright, now let's see here. With my slightly better arrows, I should get more damage out of this. <laughs> and so I did. And so I did. Not too shabby, huh? Not too shabby at all. Hi there, buddy. Nope, that's enough. Don't forget, I still have these sorceries. I should really not forget about them myself. <laughs> I love doing spell night builds. They're so fun. They really are, you know. No, that's enough. There we go. Nope, stop. That's enough out of you, too. Alright. Let's see here. I needed to do all of that. Although, on the other hand, maybe I didn't need to do all this. I guess I could have gone the other way. Ah, uh, but the Hellkite Wyvern would have come back. And yes, the Hellkite Wyvern can come back. Similarly to your first time crossing the bridge, it will just... What does this say? Trade the sign? I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. But yeah, it, it, uh, similarly to how it appears your first time going through, it will just spawn in burning the bridge up. Which is kind of annoying, but it is one of those things. That's why you get the undead basement key. Wait, what? The undead basement key? Is that what it is? Oh no, wait, it's just the regular basement key. I'm, I'm an idiot. Let's see. A uh, narrow passage leading below at the face of the Great Bridge of the Undead Burg. So, you know, don't worry about keys and going like, oh god, where does this key go? 
Often hand, like with the basement key here, it will tell you where to go in order to use the key. Kind of similar to the mystery key, it's like, oh hey, it's probably a key to a cell, to a cell door for a basic prison. And, you know, you find Lautrec in nothing more describable than a simple prison with a cell key. Let's see, Lewin Denberg is a treacherous place. Do not turn your back on the wily thieves or the wild dogs who serve the Capra demon. So here we are, another demon haunting this, uh, this burg. Thank goodness for this sliding animation. Because that would have been a pain to climb the old-fashioned way. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is not go that way. First thing I'm gonna do is come up this way. Now, does this look familiar? It should. Hi. How did uh, how did you guys get out of here? It should, because this is where I was not two minutes ago. So now we have unlocked a shortcut. One of the more annoying things about this particular doorway in this shortcut though is that as you can see it opens this way so it's directly blocking your path and you have to walk around the door in order to go down the stairs. They could have easily made it open the other way but they didn't. Oh well, whatever. Alright, so now a couple things I need to take care of. So these are the uh, the horrible ah cripes. Ha ha ha! But I have armor that I shouldn't have access to yet, so that did nothing. Liar! Let's go down this way. Somebody, please let me out of here. Somebody, anybody, help me. Unlock the door. Damn, I'm finished. How did this ever happen? And that's why you get the residence key. And here's this guy. Brilliant. You opened the door for me. Thank you. I'm saved. I thought I might never escape. I am Griggs of Vinheim, a sorcerer of the school. I am much obliged for your assistance. Thanks to you, I may now resume my travels. Cool. Oh, hello. I'm fine. I will rest a while, then return to Firelink Shrine. I have my sorcery, and I will be more cautious next time. Besides, I have an important task at hand. Come on, anything oh, else? Hello, I'm fine. I have my sword. Okay, Best yep. So he's basically like, oh, I can punish myself. But here's kind of an interesting little detail. Oh, check it out. Check it out. Is a set of clothing just like his, which is a little bit suspicious. Just a little tiny bit suspicious. And you know what? 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 Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, sorcerer girl. Wait, no, hang on. Yeah, sorcerer knight. This looks silly. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing that. Uh, that's kind of cute. I should be good on my equipment mode, yeah. Okay, I'm good on my equipment mode. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's all right. Kind of like the bangs. Yeah. Uh, mm, mm. Oh, anyways. Hey, bud. Um. So, this is kind of one of the funny things about Dark Souls and its mages, is that in order to be a mage, you have to have high intelligence in classical fantasy RPG fashion. Uh, he, he's done. I'm done with him. I don't really need to worry about him. Oh, wait, hang on. There's lore. Uh, let's see here. Hat worn by the proper sorcerers. 
who studied at the Venheim Dragon School, which is where he said he was from, Griggs of Venheim. And by the way, that was the guy that uh, the crestfallen dude was talking about. Some, oh, did you hear about that mage guy chasing after Logan? This is that guy. Uh, the majority take pride in having studied at an academy and looked down on breaking formal dress code and for establish uh, formal dress code established for sorcerers. That's funny because I'm breaking that dress code to all hell now because I am a sorcerer too. But I'm also a knight in training. Fun fact. These guys are for real. Of course, I have a... Uh, weapon that's much more upgraded than perhaps it should be because I grinded for a bunch of I grinded a bunch of Titanite from those Balder Knights. But that is the funny thing about Dark Souls and its sorcerers though, is that again, in true RPG fantasy RPG fashion, you have to have high intelligence to be a sorcerer. In order to uh, utilize Arcane magic. Let's go ahead and get rid of this right now. But, I mean, let's be honest here. Where is he? Griggs here? Griggs? Of Venheim? Griggs of Venheim? Not that smart. Oh, one, one thing I will point out real quick, though, is, uh, as you can see, this sorcerer cloak is the default sorcerer cloak, and it's a little bit different than his. His, mine is brown, where his is black. Which kind of implies that he's of a, uh, a different group, so to speak. Kind of. Sort of. It's complicated, but that that is something I will be able to expound upon later on. But yeah. Um, so how exactly did he get tricked to getting stuck in there? But the thing is, that goes on to become sort of a running theme is that for for being so smart the the mages of Dark Souls 1 tend to get themselves into situations like that over and over again and here's here's you know a proper ambush it's uh, the uh, the wily thieves just like the description was warning me the description of the key and let's see here. In here we have the mail breaker. It is one of the more, uh, I guess you would call it, like, cinematic or dramatic moments in Dark Souls 1. Let's see here. I'll leave that as it is for now. Am I gonna go ahead and beat this next boss? Probably. Okay, here we go. These dogs are a little bit of a problem, but luckily I have... Oh, another ambush. Luckily I have, like I said, since I know this game like the back of my hand, I've, I've given myself over to a situation of having armor and weapons that are... Ah, oh, shit. I'm gonna regret that. Oh, okay. Armor and weapons that are better than I should. Ooh, hello. That's not a drop I normally get. How does that look? Oh, shit, it looks cool. It actually looks pretty cool with this particular set. It's not, it's not bad, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Let's see, can I? No, that doesn't look good. Meh. I'll go back to what we had going on. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Oh. Grab that. Get it off my hotbar. There's another item in here. Here we go. It's uh, the thief set. If you play um, 
if you start out as the thief starting class, this is where, this is that set. Now I have a duplicate set for no good reason. That's right. And hang on, I kind of wanna, kind of wanna see real quick. Let's see here. Um, so I got the scimitar. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, just like I thought, you have your, you have your slash, and you have the parry animation. Kind of wonder. The mailbreaker counts as a, uh, a thrusting sword. So yeah, you have your, you have your thrust, and you also have the parry animation. Not, not that solid of a parry animation. Very tight window. Very tight window. You have to like hit the parry button pretty much as soon as you get hit with an attack. But let's see here. The rapier is the same way, but the rapier is a is a better weapon. So if you were if you, if you were to say to you, to me like, hey, rabbit, I want to do a two sword fighter in in Dark Souls One, or at least some kind of dual wielding build. Here's what I would say. Let's see here. Where, where is... Uh... I would say do this. Go Scimitar or Falchion and Rapier in the off end. Or vice versa. Because this way you have slashing attacks on one hand. And in the other hand you have thrusting attacks that do piercing damage. But this way... You have a pretty versatile move set at your disposal. Even better than that, though, is what I already have going on, and that's this sword because it has a kick, a proper kick, which is better than the scimitar's or curve sword. Uh, silly backflip bullshit, in my opinion. Anyways, that's what I would say, dude. But there are certain weapons that kind of go more traditional video game me routes of you know I'm going to take this freaking hat off I, I, this hat's bothering me okay that's so much better actually for this fight I'm going to put on the helmet just for the extra defense all right let's go ah fuck ah fuck fuck god damn it Okay, here we go. Oh, Alright. So here's what I wanted to do. Okay. One of the additionals is dead. Now the other additional is dead. Okay, now it's just a straight fight between me and the Capra Demon. Because I got rid of the dogs. Oh, I regret that. So, fun thing about this is that his stance, the way he holds his blades out behind him as he kind of like walks slowly at you, very silent kill. Like, let's see if I can get him to do it. Like that, that is such a pyramid head thing to do. More or less have this in the bag. There we go. There we go. Oh. But it's a pretty solid design overall, if you ask me. A pretty solid design. So let's see here, and that fight got me the key to the depths. So let's see here, key to the depths, key to the depths, key to the depths. Open the door leading the, uh, from lower berg to the depths. Those banished from the undead berg eke out their existence in the depths, a damp lair with no trace of sunlight. Nearly half the depths from, nearly half of the depths from a pallid. This. Wait, what? Nearly half of the depths, oh, form, not from, form a perilous, flooded labyrinth. 
That sounds like a nice place. That sounds like a place that I want to go hang out at. Okay, now before I go do anything else... Get fucked. Pow! <laughs> and fuck you. Think you're gonna ambush me? Who the hell do you think I am? And here we have... The door to the depths. But fuck that, I'm gonna ignore that right now. I'm gonna ignore that, temporarily. Let's see, I don't need to... Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. Just gonna ignore that for a minute. For a little bit. Trying to get in a bow fight with me? Who do you think I am? Get off my platform. Fucker. Alright, let's see here. Now, we have a new friend to talk to. This is one of my favorite NPCs. To be honest. Let's get a good look at her. I love the detailing on her. Like, so she's got this bandana. She has various teeth missing. She has the remnants of hair. This outfit, too, is kind of interesting. But what's so interesting about her is, like, who is she? How did she get there? So kind of similar to how you have the undead male merchant, this is the undead female merchant. You still have your senses about you. Then why won't you buy some of my moths? I need your souls. <laughs> okay, so let's see, what does she sell? She sells moss clumps, which are useful for certain areas. Dung pie, learn skulls, charcoal pine resin. She sells transient curses, which is not too shabby. That's useful for later on. She sells a lot of things that are useful in certain situations, but she also sells fire arrows, poison arrows, standard arrows, large arrows, wooden arrows, standard bolts, heavy bolts, wood bolts. She's also very good if you're playing a ranged character. She even has, uh, where, where, I just saw them. Poison throwing knives, ooh. Yeah, okay. So let's see what kind of dialogue, dialogue we can get out of her. This is a wonderful place, don't you think? We have water, moss, moisture, these nice iron bars. I like it here, I really do. Nothing good ever happened to me in life. But now that I'm undead, I've never been happier. That's some interesting dialogue. This is not the most well-explored character, but man, if she isn't at least a little bit interesting because of a line like that. Nothing good ever happened to me in life, but now that I'm undead, <laughs> I've never been happier. Now that I'm undead and stuck in this waterway forever, Waiting for people like you to come by. So you come to this land at a bad time. There are nothing but hollows in these parts. Save for me, of course. You're undead too, aren't you? You be careful then. <laughs> That's another interesting line. This land is nothing but hollows. Except for me, of course. I'm not a hollow, obviously. Go down along the side to reach the depths of the undead bird. Mm. Only unkempt crooks and liars to be found there. Hardly a place for a lady like myself. But who knows? Maybe you'd fit right in. <laughs> yes, Moss Lady. Moss Lady's fun. I like Moss Lady. But yes, she's, she's telling you, like, oh, check out the depths, man. Oh, interesting stuff goes on down there. Okay. Her dialogue has now repeated, so... What a humdrum lass you are. She's, uh, she's a little bit salty because I didn't buy any of her moss. Unfortunately, I have no use for her moss at the moment. Ok, 
Okay, now this should look familiar. Well, I don't need to tell you. The game just told you for me. This is how you get back to Firelink Shrine. Stop it. Oh, what do you do? Well, I messed that up. Is our buddy back? No? I don't see him. Hmm. But there is somebody else here who is just as important. I'm going to pop these real quick. Hi, Griggs. Oh, hello. I regret meeting you under such compromising circumstances. Oh, I bet. At least we both made it back unscathed. Incidentally, would you care to learn any sorceries? Yes. You're clearly talented, and besides, I owe you. Of course, we will require some materials, but I'm happy to teach you some elementary spells. Are you interested? Yes. Splendid. Very well. I am pleased to have a chance to give something back. Well then, let's get started straight away. Okay, so, he is a vendor. He sells sorceries first and foremost. So, regular soul arrow, heavy soul arrow, great soul arrow. Let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna need to up my intelligence a little bit to use some of this. But by and large, what I can't, he also sells these rings. And let's see here. Uh, I can go ahead and get a little bit of lore out of these. I think these are just from the Venheim Dragon School. That's that's about it. That's really all there is to say about it. And there's really not a lot of lore that you can get on most spell descriptions. Oh, that's an interesting one. This is the one I want though. Magic shield. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's see here. I'm going to need to do a lot of off-screen grinding to get all these spells. Because the thing is, after you reach a certain point, uh, Griggs here, his quest will trigger the next step, and he will leave this place. And once he leaves this place, you can't buy sorceries from him until he comes back. And so that's kind of one of the unfortunate things about Dark Souls 1. But see, that's kind of the trade-off between Dark Souls 1 versus Dark Souls 2. In Dark Souls 2, once a vendor came to the shrine, or, or the shrine equivalent of uh, Majula, they stay there. And they stay there forever. And then you can say the same thing about Dark Souls 3. But the thing is, in Dark Souls 1, since characters don't just come here and just stay here forever, it makes them feel a lot more... What's the word I'm looking for? It makes them feel a lot more realistic. They actually seem to have their own agendas. They don't just exist purely to facilitate you, the player, and your needs. I can't really use some of these. So I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and spend these points for now, leveling up my intelligence. That Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring would be useful, actually. So you have the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring and the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring, and what they do is the, be the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring makes your sorceries more powerful, whereas the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring... Um, the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring uh, makes them last longer. And that's useful for some spells, but the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring is useful for other spells. Obviously for soul arrows spells, like all these, you want the, the Bellowing... But for a spell like uh, Magic Weapon or Magic Shield, you want the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring, because that'll make the buffs on your shield or weapon last longer. Let's see here. And here's another spell that I really want for later, and that's Fall Control. There are some good things that you can do with this spell, if you know what you're doing. And this is the kind of like part three of why I decided to do an int build for the playthrough. Because there are sorceries that allow you to do certain things more easily. But, what else you got to say for yourself, Griggs? Have you heard of Big Hat Logan? Sure. Master Logan is a great sorcerer and my teacher. Both of us came to this land as undead. But one day, he departed, leaving only a note. I suppose he wished to keep me out of harm's way. But where does that leave me? I have dedicated myself to sorcery. 
but Master Logan could find no use for me. Ah, uh, yes. The note that Master Logan left. It only said he would travel to Anolondo by way of Sen's fortress. I can only guess that he seeks the regal archives. For Master Logan is a tireless pursuer of wisdom. Wisdom trumps all. Everything else is hogwash. When the curse turned him undead, I'm certain that he only felt it was the perfect chance to visit this land. I only wish that I had his courage. Two things are required for sorcery. First, you must equip a wand. Second, you must attune a sorcery. Then you will be ready to fire away. Oh, and don't forget to aim. Two things okay. are first. So that's, that, that's, he's, oh. he's, okay, yeah, he's all done. Goodbye then. Do stay safe. So this is kind of one of the unfortunate things about uh, Griggs as a character, is that the entirety of his character is dedicated to drumming up another character. So it's like without uh, this big hat Logan fellow that he keeps ragging on about, he's kind of not all that important. Obviously, there are certain things later on that a lot of people speculate give him greater importance based on his uniform. But that's, again, it's, it's, it's largely speculation, and most of his importance as a character at all is due to the fact that he's Big Hat's apprentice. Who decided, oh, Big Hat Logan, oh no, I have to follow him to Lortran. And that's it. And that's kind of it. It's, it's, it's rather unfortunate. Also, I love that, like, highly descriptive how-to on sorceries. You must equip a wand, okay? And then you attune a spell, okay? And then you fire. Oh. Um... Okay, I, I mean, it, I mean, is that really it? Yes, yes, that's really it. And and the same thing can be said too about the description on sorceries. Oh, the soul arrow inflicts magic damage, and, and you point and you aim, and you point, and 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 you push the button, and the spell comes out. It's rather funny because again, the stat for it is called intelligence, but it seems like the most blunt, straightforward thing. Let me go check on something real quick. Aha! Now you might remember the party that Petrus said he was waiting on. His gaggle of friends. Fun fact! These guys' armor sets are assets that do exist in the game's files. However, they're not obtainable by normal means. Neither is that shield. Well, no, actually, I have seen that shield before. I've used that shield. Never mind. But their armor that they are wearing, and only the armor, are, uh, like I said, not obtainable by normal means. Because even though they are assets that exist in the game, they do have stat values for player use. They are not obtainable in-game. You have to cheat that shit in, unfortunately. And it is known as the Elite Cleric Set. Hmm? What a clever fellow, this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can tell I'm going to have a lot of fun conversations with you. Hmm? What have we here? You look awfully raggedy. Times are grim. The least you can do is look sharp. Don't you dare meet my lady like that. You might scare her off for good. How dare you? Raggedy? I'm raggedy? Look at this fine tabard with this inlay of cloth of gold. Wow, the detail on that is actually really good. I never... You know, that's something else about Dark Souls 1. Man, not a lot of people give them credit. But man, they textured their shit good. Obviously, it's not all perfect, but look how good the texturing is on that. Like, you can see the, all these seams and sewing lines on the right side there, and the cloth inlay actually looks like cloth inlay instead of just, like, being painted on all solidly. Anything else to say there, fuckface? Oh, you again. What business have you? I don't suppose we can help, though. 
We accompany my lady on her righteous mission. It is quite a chore, but I'm stuck with her, and Nico too. I can't very well abandon them now. Oh, you again. I don't... We accompany... It All is right. quite a chore. I can't very well... So let's see here. That guy... Uh, smarty pants over here. Mm hmm? Good old... Mm, that's Nico. And who are you? Oh, Petrus. Oh, hello. My guests have finally arrived. I will be departing with them shortly. Good. So, I'm afraid I will be saying goodbye soon. It was a pleasure. Oh, hello. Miracles, I... Pre okay, uh, anything else to say? Rhea is the youngest daughter of the good house of Thurland. Those young knights are her old schoolmates. But I'm not sure what to make of them. I'm afraid they may be a bad influence. <laughs> well, you're not wrong there, but I'm not sure what to make of them either. Rhea is the youngest daughter, though, but I'm, I'm afraid. Okay. Come again. The effectiveness of... Okay. So, a couple things. I now know that this is Rhea of Thurland. And these are schoolmates of hers. Oh, it's you. We're to leave momentarily. The catacombs aren't exactly my idea of a good time, but... What can one do? I do hope we meet again. Rarely or not. Rarely or not, yeah. <laughs> okay. You wanna you wanna run that by me again? Um. Uh. Uh. Very Knox. Yep. Mm -hmm. You are undead as well. Then we've no time to fraternize. I have my mission, and you no doubt have yours. We must not let this curse overcome us. Did I not explain the urgency of our tasks? Or are you so uncouth as to lack such judgment? By the looks of you, I should think not. Did I not explain the urgency? Or are okay, you by okay. the looks Yep, yep, all right. So, um... As you can see, she's praying for uh, good luck on the journey that they have going on, and a lot of a lot of what their quest is is stuff that I'm gonna have to explain later, because it's 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 obviously not really explained that well right now. And looking back on this now, with with the hindsight of Dark Souls two and Dark Souls three, I have to say, um. I realize what they did for uh, Henri and Horace. It's literally just Rhea of Thurland here in my suit of armor and Mumbles. That's, that's basically all it is. That's basically all it is. You got anything else to say, buddy? Oh, medical. Uh, anything else to say? Rhea is the young... No, no, okay. Now, let's see. There's one more final thing I want to try. This might take a second. Hello there, friend. You're a pretty solid-looking character. Now, this is going to be kind of weird. I'm going to quit the game. Load us back in. Aha! Yes! It worked! Hey again, Lord Trek. Well, where have you been? <laughs> I'm glad to see you're safe. Aw, he cares about me. We're friends now. Have you heard of trusty patches? No. If ever a man has rubbed me up the wrong way, <sighs> if he ever comes around again, I swear, I'll have his hide. <laughs> so now we have this thing again where other characters are starting to be mentioned before I even meet them, yeah? You again. What is it? Our futures are murky. Let's not be too friendly now. Okay, so now he's all done on dialogue again. Now let's go see if the uh, crestfallen guy has anything else to say. Anything else to say at all, buddy? Have you been to the ruins of New Londo below? Temporarily. Just head down the stairs and take the lift. It's certainly worth a visit. 
It was once an undead city. You may find a clue or two, unless the ghosts find you first. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? How did that nutty sorcerer make it back? Unexpected. There it is. But I suppose stranger things have happened. How did that raggedy old charm end up? You know, the one who idolized some godmother of pyromancy. He left for Blighttown, but never came back. Whereas most flee from sickness, he dives right in. Well, nothing will harm him once he goes hollow. Okay, so once again, He's mentioning characters out there in the wilds that I have yet to come across. Mm hmm? What now? I'm not up. Okay, so that's it. That's all he's got. <laughs> I do like that he actively mentions, like, ugh, how did this guy get back here in one piece? What a bunch of bullcrap. <laughs> I do like that, I do like that. Alright, so I think that's going to be it for now. So, let's see here. What am I going to do next after this? I think next after this, I ought to go back and take care of the Undead Asylum. That's what I'll do next time. So, until then, thanks for watching, and good night. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs>